Hello, and thank you for tuning into our talk, Rewarding and Recognizing Team Infrastructure Roles. My name is Esther Plomp, and I'm a data steward at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, and... I'm Ariel Bennett, Program Manager for the Tools, Practices and Systems Program at the LM Turing Institute. And today we'll talk about uh, rewarding and recognizing team infrastructure roles. Um, but this is heavily based on work that we've been uh, collaborating on with several of our co-authors, which are listed in the slide, in uh, a work that's called A Manifesto for Rewarding and Recognizing Team Infrastructure Roles. And we have a preprint out, so anything that we're touching upon now, uh, you can read upon in more detail in the preprint. But before we start talking about how do you recognize and reward these team infrastructure roles, we figured it would be more helpful to discuss first who or what these team infrastructure roles are. And these can be a great variety of roles that are contributing to research. So there's a couple of roles listed in the slide, such as laboratory technicians, librarians, data stewards, data managers, research software engineers, community managers, and the list goes on and on, and will likely develop in the upcoming years as more of these roles develop. What they have in common is that they make great contributions to research, and they are involved in the research process, but they are not necessarily incentivized to participate in the credit economy, which in research is still producing academic papers. And we have called them team infrastructure roles, uh, infrastructure to stress that they actually play a structural role in this research process. And we argue that there are many benefits of having these types of roles in research. It um, increases the amount of specialized expertise you can have in research teams, which would allow them to tackle more complex challenges that individual researchers would not be able uh, to handle. It also contributes a lot more diverse perspective uh, to research, not just skills, but also different perspectives. And by having this specialized infrastructure in place, you can also improve the productivity and processes involved in research, because you're not no longer relying on a single individual being able to do all the things. And that is building on uh, the quotes that Kirsty Whitaker made uh, at U AI UK this year. We basically cannot expect individuals to be able to perform all the tasks of academia to the highest standard. It's just not possible that we can uh, be a specialized unicorn in everything and do all the things. On the other hand, uh, another quote from McFarlane here is saying that if you pass these tasks to professionals, uh, you are basically hollowing out what it means to be an academic. So these are two different perspectives on this. And what we're here for today is to generate some of our own quotes by giving you some of our more personal perspectives regarding the team infrastructure roles, because the two of us are both involved in such a role. So myself as a data steward and Ariel as a program manager. And as a data steward at the Delft University of Technology, I am mostly providing other researchers with any support regarding data management, software support, and any open science questions. And in this role, for me, it is quite challenging to see a career path beyond my career as a data steward. Uh, one of the career paths is to become a data stewardship coordinator. Uh, but what if I don't want to manage other data stewards and I would rather be more directly involved in the research process? So there's not really a clear option available for that. And also not a, a lot of opportunities to be more directly involved in research. It's more of an advisory role. And so what uh, I've thankfully been able to do, and that is also because I have a very supportive manager, uh, is to become more involved in other communities that are focusing more on open science, which has allowed me to develop skills um, and to basically um, become more involved in the community and also with other researchers outside of my faculty. 
So I'm a project member at the Turing Way, a mentor expert at Open Life Science, and also an Open Research Ambassador and board member at ISOARC. And while it's, it's great that I can gain experience in mentoring, um, being a part of committees, um, being a part of boards, etc. Sometimes it feels a little bit like this is not fully part of my role as a data steward. Uh, and it becomes a bit of a hobby sometimes. And that is also dangerous in terms of uh, life health balances, uh, life work balances, sorry. So these are some of the challenges that I'm dealing with. And now to Ariel. So uh, as a programme manager at the Alan Turing Institute, I have a fantastic and incredibly varied role. And I have to say, I'm also very lucky to be part of an incredibly diverse team um, who supports and recognises everybody's contributions um, to uh, the research process. But what I find is because my role is uh, on a day to day basis is predominantly an operational role. Uh, it can be incredibly difficult to find the time to contribute to open science. Uh, to contribute to the research processes in the way that I would like to, um, and to also sort of do some of the, the writing and the thinking that I would also, also like to do as well. Um, and so as a project member of the Turing Way, I have uh, tried to build this into my day-to-day. -day. Um, so sharing um, uh, advice and expertise via its project design, uh, yeah, project design guide, um, but my other area is bringing in uh, my knowledge of uh, labour organising and union, unions into the research ethics guide as well, um, on the basis that uh, ethical research includes ethical working conditions for everybody involved in that work. Um, but yeah, finding time to participate when there are a lot of demands on my time that aren't necessarily visible to the researchers is a massive challenge. Um, but another challenge that I do face is that sometimes uh, I find that there are um, there's more weight placed on academic voices um, when it comes to sort of making decisions, even when people in the room who work in team infrastructure roles might have more specialist expertise that would be better served, um, you know, uh, working on that uh, or providing the path forward, I think. So, um, these are not just our unique uh, perspectives and challenges. Um, we have, as uh, Esther mentioned, we've been working on uh, a manifesto for rewarding, recognizing and rewarding team infrastructure roles. Um, and we go into some of these emerging challenges um, in more depth in the paper. Um, but uh, we do see um, folks finding that they have a, a notable lack of autonomy in these roles. So they're perhaps limited by um, either task requirements or um, by narrowly scoped and defined um, contributions rather than being allowed to engage uh, their creativity and their expertise. Um, for some roles, uh, these they're very emerging and, and incredibly new uh, roles, such as research application managers or data stewards have really not been around for, for very long at all. And this leads to a limited formalization of career pathways. Um, so for example, for, for me, if I want to move on from being a program manager, um, there are sort of uh, not that many options in terms of um, you know growing and challenging myself that exist yet. Um, so. Uh, then we think about um, the traditional prejudice that we've seen from uh, McFarlane uh, in 2011 about the team infrastructure role activities and, and career choices. Um, and I have, you know, in, in previous roles, uh, heard people describe uh, folks who've chosen team infrastructure roles as, you know, not being successful when in actual fact they're providing an incredibly specialised set of expertise that would be impossible to develop without making a career choice to develop those skills and expertise and, and to devote time and effort into it. And then finally, um, the limited uh, range of academic recognition at the moment really uh, erases a lot of team infrastructure role contributions towards the research process. Um, you know, for example, as as a program manager, uh, I'm not typically acknowledged on papers, and that is a standard thing um, that we see uh, throughout academia. Um, bioinformaticians, for example, or 
um, research software engineers have long known the challenges of being included as middle, middle authors rather than first or last, um, and indeed the focus on who is first and who is last on a paper um, is uh, an overarching challenge, I, I would say, of academia in general as well. Um, so we see all of these challenges um, with this emerging class of roles um, that is linked to sort of the challenging the structures of academia. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. We didn't want to come here and just uh, tell people um, how difficult it is to manage these roles. Um, there are processes and pathways forward that we also propose um, in the preprint as well. Um, and uh, first up, uh, our recommendation is to focus on the process and not the outcomes of research. So moving away from that traditional view of uh, the academic paper as the be all and end all of academic success or research success, um, the ability to focus on um, uh, how the research is done, is it done in a collaborative way, uh, is the code uh, well documented? Is it written well? Um, what other outputs are being um, produced and how is the work actually being done um, in a way that's mutually respectful and collaborative? All of these things should be valued just as much as uh, academic papers and sort of research artifacts. Um, alongside this, we also uh, strongly advocate for ex massively expanding uh, the system that currently is widely acknowledged as uh, the way to recognize contributions. So taking into account um, the unique uh, contributions that team infrastructure roles can make to each part of the um, research process um, would go a long way to you know, uh, supporting these roles and, and kind of highlighting the mutual respect for them um, from the academic system. Um, again, the, these all complement each other very nicely, but there's also um, the idea of a system to validate the research outputs as well, um, to ensure that um, they're, what's being produced is uh, reproducible, it's reusable, um, and, uh, and that it's of high quality. And then finally, um, we strongly advocate for standardized roles and pathways for career development that exist outside of the traditional tenure track towards professor um, at the end. Um, and in the paper itself, we go into a bit more detail and we actually look at uh, three roles that are in various stages of maturity um, from research software engineer, um, with a relatively well-established pathway, a series of professional networks across the globe. Um, and I would also say quite a lot of uh, high esteem and, and prestige for those working in, um, in those teams through to newer roles that are still in the process of being developed and emerging um, to address the variety of research needs that we're finding. Um, and we uh, make the case that research software engineers could potentially form something of a blueprint for these other roles to follow in terms of networks, development opportunities and career pathways forward as well. Um, also, uh, if you've listened to this talk and you think, oh, this sounds great. <laughs> I didn't realize, but actually I'm a I'm working in a team infrastructure role as well. Uh, Esther and I would love to hear from you. Uh, we uh, have co-authored and uh, helped other people to contribute to uh, the chapter in the Turing Way called Research Infrastructure Roles, highly analogous to the team infrastructure roles that we're talking about now. So if you'd like to share um, a description of your role or you'd like to share your career pathway um, as a case study for this chapter, please do uh, open an issue on GitHub. Um, we would love to have a chat with you um, and you know, take your feedback as well on, on the existing roles that we're currently covering there. Um, and this is open as well. You also don't need our permission to come along and, and suggest changes. We'd love to have you on board. Uh, so in summary, very quickly, um, team infrastructure roles provide diverse benefits to research processes and outputs, and I would argue are a cornerstone of how modern research can and should be done. Um, but there are challenges with integrating team infrastructure roles into um, the way that we view the research process now in the modern day, um, including uh, levels of autonomy, uh, career development and also mutual respect as well. Um, 
And finally, that focusing beyond papers towards processes and broader outputs from the research process is only going to benefit not only those working in team infrastructure roles, but actually the broader academic sphere as well. Um, the uh, recognizing more diverse contributions, recognizing a variety of contributions um, is really the way forward, the future for academia. And so um, if you disagree with that, that's also fine. Um, but in closing, I'd like to finish with a, a particular question um, that, you know, whether you agree or disagree with what we've discussed here and sort of the challenges is uh, what we're, we're really wanting to try and uh, tackle is how we need to, how we should remake the system so that these kinds of diverse roles are truly seen as integral participants in research. Um, so with that, thank you very much to our co-authors on, on the preprint. Um, a huge thank you to the Turing Way, OLS, and the wider open science communities. Um, a particular shout out to the Turing Way illustrations by Scriberia that you've seen um, some of the uh, throughout the uh, talk. And uh, I'd also like to extend a particular thanks to the Tools, Practices and Systems Programme at the Alan Turing Institute, where I get to work with an incredible uh, diverse um, range of team infrastructure or research infrastructure role people. Um, and it's an amazing space. So huge thanks to, to them as well.